This video is brought to you by CatBeast.com. Design your own custom snapbacks and hats. To ensure you don't miss a single hardware unbox video, hit subscribe, then tap the bell. Thanks to CatBeast for sponsoring this video and welcome back to the Hardware Unbox News Corner. Today's episode is jam packed with juicy news stories, including new Spectre vulnerabilities, DRAM price fixing, more Ryzen processors leaked, Intel discontinuing KB Lake X, and more. So let's get right to it. The big breaking news story from today is a new set of Spectre vulnerabilities. Yep, just what Intel wanted. These new flaws dubbed Spectre Next Generation were revealed in an exclusive over at Hives.de, where they cite several teams of researchers that have found eight new vulnerabilities in Intel's processes. Hives.de aren't publishing any technical information about these Spectre NG flaws. However, they do say that all eight are essentially caused by the same design problem. Each vulnerability already has an allocated CVE number and each will require its own set of patches. Intel have already classified four of the eight issues as high risk and the other four are medium. One flaw in particular is said to be the most easily exploitable Spectre vulnerability yet, allowing an attacker to launch code in a virtual machine and then have it cross over to the host machine. According to their sources, one of the teams that discovered these new flaws is Google's Project Zero, who uncovered the original set of Spectre issues, and as per their policy, Google won't be releasing any public information about Spectre NG until they've given companies 90 days notice. Apparently that 90 day window is up on May 7th, where we may officially hear about these flaws. Intel are already working on patches for Spectre NG, according to the highest article, as are operating system developers. Apparently there are two waves of patches planned for May and August to address these issues, and there may even be fixes distributed through Windows updates, as PC manufacturers are quite slow at releasing BIOS revisions. Intel have today released a statement titled Addressing Questions Regarding Additional Security Issues, which seems to be in reference to the highs article without directly naming it. In the statement, Intel says, We routinely work closely with customers, partners, other chip makers, and researchers to understand and mitigate any issues that are identified, and part of this process involves reserving blocks of CVE numbers. We believe strongly in the value of coordinated disclosure and will share additional details on any potential issues as we finalize mitigations. As a best practice, we continue to encourage everyone to keep their systems up to date. So it does sound like there might be some truth to the highest report, and it could just be a few days before Intel is talking about new Spectre issues. If you're wondering about other CPU manufacturers and their susceptibility to Spectre NG, there is initial evidence, according to Hise, that ARM processors are affected. However, there is no word on whether AMD processors are susceptible, though research is underway to determine if they are. I have seen some rumors suggesting AMD is not affected, though I want to stress that nothing has been confirmed at this stage, and the original source article does say they're still researching it. So yeah, more Spectre problems, which is always fun stuff. I'm sure we'll see a lot of fallout relating to these problems in the coming days, so hold tight. For now, let's move on to some other news topics. This is a story you guys have been begging me to cover since the last news corner, DRAM price fixing. Yes, law firm Hagen's Berman has filed a class action lawsuit in the US targeting the big three DRAM manufacturers, Samsung, Micron, and SK Hynix. The lawsuit alleges these three manufacturers conspired to artificially limit the supply of memory in what essentially amounts to a price fixing scheme. The firm investigated DRAM DRAM prices over the last two years and discovered a 47% price increase during 2017, the largest jump in 30 years, which is just unbelievable really. The firm claims the price fixing occurred at least between June 1st, 2016 and February 1st, 2018, with the class action open to any US consumer that purchased a device with DRAM during this period. So. That's a fair few people. These three companies own about 96% of all DRAM manufacturing capacity, so it would be pretty easy for them to collaborate to inflate prices and make tons of money. 
However, at this stage, these are just unproven claims and allegations, and it will be up to the three companies to respond and defend themselves in a lawsuit that of course could last a pretty long time. The companies have 21 days to respond, so we should hear more on this very soon. And it does align with reports that the Chinese government is investigating these manufacturers for similar issues. So. We'll see where this all leads. Intel are discontinuing KB Lake X. The CPUs which were widely seen as a failure have entered the end of life stage and won't be available beyond about a year from now. Any PC builder or store that wants to purchase new KB Lake X CPUs will need to do so before November 30th, 2018, and Intel will ship the final set of CPUs by May 31st, 2019. The two KB Lake X CPUs, the Core i5 7640X and Core i7 7740X, didn't make much sense as they were very similar to existing quad core KB Lake CPUs, they were just built for the LGA 2066 socket instead. Motherboards with that socket were more expensive than LGA 1151 boards for regular KB Lake CPUs, and even then KB Lake X couldn't make use of all the features provided by Intel's enthusiast platform. KB Lake X was supposed to be able to clock higher thanks to better power delivery and a higher TDP, but overall it just didn't make sense as a product, so it's no real surprise it's being discontinued at this point, and it fits with an earlier story that suggested Intel's upcoming X399 chipset will not support KB Lake X. An update to AMD's product portfolio has leaked several new Ryzen chips that are set to launch soon. There's not a whole lot of information at this stage, but it does seem AMD has three quad-core second-gen Ryzen CPUs in the works. The Ryzen 3 2100, Ryzen 3 2300X, and Ryzen 5 2500X. Then on the mobile front, we have the Ryzen 3 2000U, the Ryzen 5 2600U, and Ryzen 7 2800U to complement existing APUs available for laptops and other mobile devices. Also, this product list does reveal the Threadripper 2900X, Threadripper 2920X, and Threadripper 2950X, which shouldn't come as a surprise. Second gen Threadripper is scheduled for the second half of 2018, and these product names are basically what we expect AMD to use at launch. Intel's 10 nanometer node continues to be an absolute disaster for them. Late last week, the company revealed they have delayed 10 nanometer mass production to 2019, adding yet another delay to an already long list of delays. 10 nanometer was originally supposed to be ready in 2016, then it was pushed to 2017, then to 2018, and now all the way to 2019. Meanwhile, competitors like TSMC, Global Foundries, and Samsung are all launching new nodes, including 7 nanometers and even 5 nanometers across the next couple of years. Though, of course, these measurement figures are just marketing and really aren't comparable across companies. Right now, Intel are shipping some 10 nanometer chips in low volume, with CEO Brian Krasanich stating that yields are improving, but the rate of improvement is slower than we anticipated. As such, volume production that was supposed to ramp up in the second half of 2018 has now been delayed to 2019, and it's not clear whether this is the first or second half of next year. With the way 10 nanometers has gone for Intel so far, it does seem like a second half of 2019 launch is a bit more likely, if not even later than that. This means that Intel's new set of processors for the second half of 2018 will be yet another 14 nanometer product, their fifth consecutive line of 14 nanometer CPUs that started with Broadwell in 2014. These new CPUs will be codenamed Whiskey Lake for client and Cascade Lake for data centers. Who knows what sort of improvements we'll get with these new processors, but we've seen previously with the move from Skylake to Kaby Lake that when Intel doesn't add more cores or move to a new architecture on the same node, there are very few performance improvements to be had. In other Intel-related news, Chris Hook, formerly the head of marketing at AMD's Radeon Technologies Group, has joined Intel as the head of discrete graphics marketing. We know Intel are working hard on discrete graphics products, and this hire just confirms their plan to push into that market soon. Intel have already hired Raja Kaduri from AMD, and earlier this year they hired Jim Keller as well, who is the lead architect on the Zen project. Interesting that Intel is stockpiling AMD talent at the moment, I think they've got something pretty big in the works. AMD is set to launch patches for the controversial CTS Labs vulnerabilities shortly. In a statement to Tom's Hardware, AMD confirms that they have shipped patches for Epic processors addressing all the flaws to ecosystem partners, while also releasing patches mitigating Chimera across all AMD products. These patches are currently in final testing with the ecosystem partners and should be released shortly. 
Patches for all the other floors on non-Epic products are on track for release to ecosystem partners this month, and then those patches will become publicly available after the partners complete their validation work. Intel has launched a new Optane SSD, the 905P, which brings incremental upgrades over the older 900P. Performance is slightly higher than the 900P and capacities are up, with the add-in card jumping to a 960GB capacity and the U.2 card moving up to 480GB. PC Perspective tested the 960GB add-in card and performance was very good with the best random performance they have seen and improved sequential performance. However, the price does still remain extremely high at US$1300 for the 960GB card, which is more than double the older 480GB 900p $600 price. Final topic for this week is good news for everyone. The FTC has given companies 30 days to remove any and all warranty void if removed stickers, as they are legally invalid in the first place, at least in the US. The FTC specifically contacted Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, Hyundai, HTC, and ASUS, telling them to get rid of the stickers, but the rule does apply to basically every manufacturer. It's also a neat reminder for those in the US that those stickers have no legal bearing whatsoever, and even if you remove them, a warranty claim cannot be denied on the basis of the sticker not being intact. And that's it for this week's News Corner. Check out Cat Beast and use our code HU10 to get 10% off your orders. Don't forget to subscribe to get this segment in your inbox every Friday, and I'll catch you next week.